next up to face my brush. I've wanted one for a while now, and yep, it's the other big brain bug of the swarm, the Maliceptor. The alternative build is the Toxicrine, which also looks like it will be fun on the battlefield, so I'll be magnetizing this thing to give me the choice. But first, a quick message from this video's kind sponsor, Gouge Industries. The Administratum is leaning on you to meet quotas. The Astra Militarum are getting techy at your low recruitment numbers. And you are hearing whispers that the Inquisition is sniffing around. And all because you have a world that's just not pulling its weight. Don't go overboard with the Life Eater. Don't piddle around with orbital bombardment. Solve your problematic colony with good old chemical weapons. Gouge Industries is here for you. Gouge have a wide variety variety of toxic payloads designed for your needs and body counts accurate from the hundreds to the millions. Their fine products can eat through seals, melt flesh, dissolve metal, cause instant death or if you fancy a more lingering fate so your traitors can truly repent their slothful and disloyal ways. For the discerning Imperial Governor, Gouge Industries has your back. Get your Astropath to mention this channel in their broadcast and Gouge will perform the bombardment for you absolutely free of charge. Free and accurate deployment of their excellent products. You just can't beat that price. Gouge Industries, tip top toxic you can trust. And now back to the video. It's actually nice out, so during my lunch break at work, might as well pop outside and start prepping the model while catching some rays. With my trusty X-Acto knife, I chopped off all the weird little nubbins and stray bits and scraped it along at an angle to file away the mold lines, which are actually pretty minor compared to some other models I've done. Now, immediately, I can see some looming problems. Namely, how to attach the heads, the huge tentacle bunches, and how to get the Toxicrine caps to fasten over the Maliceptor carapace brains. I can't do this anymore, man. My head's about to explode. My whole life sucks. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. Every time I drive down the road, I want to jerk the wheel into a goddamn bridge in Buntman. But then I had an idea. Magnets have, like, a magnetic field. I can place one magnet on the inside of the caps and another on the inside of the torso to send its attraction out through the plastic and haul the cap into place, and this might just work. Okay, let's give it a go. First, adding the tail to the lower part of the torso, and this is where I am going to pause assembly. The upper main torso comes in two pieces, so I can fiddle with drilling and magnets more easily, and then assemble afterwards if all goes well. First up, as usual, drop the queue of magnets onto the base of a drill bit and find out which bit will get me the correct fit. I'm still working my way through the Magnet Soul Magnet Pack and I'm going with the medium sized ones for the inner surface of the torso. Working gently, I drilled a shallow hole, more a dent really, on the inside of the torso in the middle of each of the brains. Then, working very gently so that I don't punch through the plastic, I drilled a pit on the inside of each of the Toxicrine caps that cover the brains to get the Toxicrine build. The magnet is shallow enough that it can just lay flush with the inside surface, meaning these caps can lock into place and not be propped up by the magnet. A dab of superglue, drop them in, and because there's no magnet on magnet contact, you can drop the rest to the other end to make sure you have them the right way round, and so you don't risk pulling off your installed magnet before the glue is dry. And here we go, you can just drop the caps onto the brains and bingo, the Toxicrine build. Now that the interior work is done, I can get back to assembling the torso, and then add in the legs, and then gluing together the massive toxic lashes. And right about here, I could feel the weight of these things. This could be a problem. And speaking of problems, the heads don't have much plastic behind the jaw to allow you to fit a magnet there. In fact, there's this obvious V-shaped slot that almost seems deliberate to make it even harder to magnetize. 
Okay, army painter green stuff. A bit of blue, a bit of yellow, and mush them together until it turns green. And then grabbing a blob, I molded it into the back of the face in that V-shaped slot to get a nice flat surface. And then in the torso, I got another little blob that I molded into position to create an opposing surface. A little dab of water across the outer surfaces of the green stuff makes it not so sticky. And this let me press them together and make sure I had a good fit. And then I could pull them apart again and not pull anything out of position. While the green stuff is hardening, drilling another little hole in the underside of the torso because both builds have a different chitin carapace thing down there for some reason. And then onto the toxic lashes. Now I am well aware that my little magnet soles just don't have the power to hold up these massive toxic lashes if I want to magnetize them. I thought about using a couple side by side, maybe use green stuff to get a, a larger area, a wider platform for them both. But then I decided that, well, I'm almost out of magnets, so let's see if there's anything out there with a bit more welly. The army painter to the rescue. Look at these beauties. Now that's attraction. Okay, scope out the pose I want, cut off the rounded ball of the socket to get a nice flat surface and drill into it and then drill into the torso pits and also drill into the massive side and talons. Now, because of all the magnets already in the torso, it's pretty tricky to get the magnet into the limb hole without it flipping or being pulled aside. So I dropped a single magnet onto a drill bit and added a dab of glue into the hole and then pushed it into place. And then used the back of a wooden brush to hold it down so I could then pull the drill bit away and leave the magnet in place. For the limbs, as usual, push the queue of magnets towards the destination, and if it repels, add a dab of glue, insert, and wipe aside using your thumbnail to keep it in place until the main collection of magnets are out of attraction range so it doesn't flip in its hole. And there we have it. The army painter magnets are strong enough to hold them aloft with no drooping or falling off. Okay. Glue the forelegs into position now that I've finished playing with the torso. And after drilling holes in the green stuff and adding glue, it became apparent that the Maliceptor head is a bit of a weirder fit than a Toxicrine tentacle face one. So if you're gluing it in place, sure, it'd be fine. But for magnetizing, it's just not right. There's an excellent spot just below a carapace vent to drill into the plastic and add a magnet, but there's nothing for it to attach to on the rear of the head. Okay, another blob of green stuff, and this one set up in the back of the skull to create another point to insert a magnet. And you know, rather than let it dry and then drill it, I'm just going to push the magnet in right now while it's soggy. Okay, the Maliceptor and Toxicrine fully and totally magnetized every bit for every bill. That does exist. Yes, the legends are true. On to priming. I set everything up in an old hiking boot box and with the army painter gave everything a nice coat of matte black. This revealed a few gaps in the joins, especially by the tail. So out comes the Mr. Dissolved putty and with an older brush, I painted it in to fill these little troughs and get a smoother surface. On to my high fleet colors. First up, the McCrag blue base on all of the skin, and then some Zerus purple on all the areas of chitin. And then, white scar on the gills, the vents, the Maliceptor tongues, and those nifty carapace brains. And then, some Imric blue dry dabbed onto the claw tips and the Toxicrine facial tendrils to get a solid hue. And then, with enough paint shed, some nice dry brushing over all the areas of the crag blue to start bringing out the details. And then, the Nihilic Oxide technical paint on all the areas of white scar so that it settles in the troughs and gives it a nice glowing effect. This came out real nice on the Maliceptor brains. Then, some more dry brushing on the feeder tendrils, but wait, oops, forgot the null oil. Grabbing a larger brush, I applied it all over and left it to dry. Then, breaking out the lock picks that have been serving me so well, they allow me to get in there and scrape the paint off of the magnets for better attraction. And because they aren't sharp, like an X-Acto knife, if I slip, it's not going to chop anything off or carve into anything. Then, 
back to the dry brush in. Imric Blue dry on the claws and the lashes and everything else, and then Ethereum dry on the lash tips and claw tips and tendril tips, and then Jean Steeler Purple dry brushed on all the areas of chitin, and then I added the carapace caps to protect my glowing brains as I applied the Jean Steeler Purple to them so that the brains don't get any accidental swipes. Then I popped them off so I could give a very delicate application of white scar to the tops of the brains. Then I glued some chunks of quarter inch small weld slate and stone onto the base, poured on some Elmers and wiped it around, and then sprinkled on eight inch gravel to coat the whole thing. I pressed it into place to make sure they stick, and here we go. Let's see it in action. Here is a Tyranid Toxicrine, waving its lethal lashes in the air like it just don't care. Off come the lashes, off comes the head, off come the caps, and the underside chitin. And on goes the fang-filled and blade-adorned head, the massive scything talons, and the new chitin underside thing to give me a Malaceptor. The Malaceptor, a horrific creation blending the strength of the exocrine with the psychic devastation of the zoanthrope, sending out massive pulses of devastating psychic power. And here's the Toxicrine, a beast that fills the air with toxic spores and carves into the foe with massive toxic lashes.